so something Trevor and I suggest is uh, when when we're doing these channeling things is to practice channeling your higher self because that's the yes. most important part, right? Mm -hmm. Well, how do you do that? Well, you start off with yes or no answers. As humans, we have to teach ourselves that what we're doing is right. So you start off small. What is something inconsequential that if I get it wrong, it's not going to derail my life, right? right? higher self should i wear this cat shirt tomorrow in public you know no okay should i wear this shirt yeah okay it doesn't matter right if i get it wrong i'm not gonna right. have to give up anything but it's still something i can test out and put in the water mm -hmm. so i wear the shirt and the first thing happens when i'm out in public oh man you know that shirt it's a great that, shirt i love that yeah i love that character i have a book yeah and and it leads you into a conversation about something else that you love or something else you're interested in right. or spirituality or meditation or conversation with a higher self it could be anything that tells you you were right Welcome to Far Out with Faust, everybody. I am Faust Chicho, and today I am excited and delighted to be joined by my friend Rob Gauthier, aka the ET Whisperer. Let me tell you about this tremendous man and what he's up to. Rob is a trans channel, he's a medium, he's a metaphysical speaker and teacher. He's an author who has been featured on countless panels, shows, and workshops, and he's hosted countless more. He's one of the most big hearted and beautiful human beings I've had the privilege to come to call my friend. And I'm welcoming him back with open arms. Rob, thank you so much for beaming back into the podcast, brother. How are you? How's the family? I'm doing good. Uh, we're all doing all right. And uh, it's always a great pleasure to be here with you, spend any time with you, but doing your show is extra exciting. Thanks, bro. Thanks. I appreciate that, man. So my God, it's been, it's been a few years. It's like time flies. It's been, uh, it, it was, it's been a while. I think, I think you were on the show in 2021, yeah, uh... right? Wasn't it for everyone who's kind of uh, meeting you for the first time? I just thought maybe you want, let's just begin at a place where, you know, you, you tell, tell my listeners about the two incredible entities well there's two main entities that you that you channel um and um kind of just if just to get them up to speed so they understand who who you are and uh and and what you do right now if, if you guys want a full backstory in history you got to go back and watch um the earlier episode with with rob gauthier you can't miss it it's the one with the giant uh rep 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 reptilian uh what would you call it uh not a reptile. Um, yeah, that's, yeah. Um, it's pretty reptilian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, on the cover, you can't miss it. Uh, but yeah, go go ahead, Rob. Get get them up to speed, and then we'll we'll hit the ground running. Yeah, uh, it, it's always a long story, and and that's why I think uh, to to get the full scope of it, okay, definitely go back and listen to the first one. But if we're making a, a small story short, I went through a really hard time in my life for a lot of reasons, uh, growing up and having a son with disabilities and getting on drugs and then getting off drugs. I came to a spiritual place. And when I learned how to meditate and obsessed over how to meditate and lived meditation, I finally met my first guide trapped in the astral state. Now astral states like a dream, but you're awake. Um, it's like an intentional connection in a meditative state, even though it wasn't intentional for me then, uh, it would be now. And I met this being and, and his name was Trev and, and I started connecting with him and I, I thought my brain got broken, <laughs> uh, but I was curious enough to keep going back. Right. And I kept going and going and talking and I ended up talking to this being for like two years and he told me some crazy things about how reality worked and how we're connected and all these different things. And then I go and explore the internet and the internet's pretty young these days. At that time, it was back in 2008 uh, ish or so. So there wasn't a ton of anything on the internet about uh, channeling. Well, I mean, there was some on channeling. It wasn't huge uh, metaphysics um, or, or much of any of the things he was sharing with me. So 
I end up finding some things and synchronicities resonated a lot with me. And I found out, wow, this isn't just some thing I'm making up in my head. Um, so I continue and two years after I start doing this over and over again, every day meeting up with Treb, um, I finally saw all these people as part of my resonance and part of my synchronicities. I saw these people online channeling and that's how they were bringing this information forward. Most of the time, sometimes they weren't, but most of the time they were Jane Roberts and uh, a whole mm -hmm. bunch of other channeling, Dale Lanka and all them. And I said, can we do what they do? Can we channel? Uh, can I channel you and, and you share this information with people? Because as much as it's helped me in my life and change, I want to make it accessible for others. And he said, yeah, we can do that. So I learned how to channel and I worked with him for many years uh, from 2010 to about 2013-ish, 14-ish. Uh, and I had met Ardip before, not directly, but I channeled him, which is the second being that I channel mostly. Um, but he only did like one little chapter of a book I did with a friend uh, who asked, can you bring uh, a guide or, or someone who can share information? And Trev said, yeah. So he brought this being who called himself Ardiff. And he shared a bunch of the best 20 pages in that whole book came from Ardiff. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I want to channel this being. So I asked Trev, you know, how do we do it? And he said, well, you can't really channel him. I can channel him like I did the last time. Mm -hmm. I channel him, you channel me type thing. Um, and then, you know, that's how we have to do it. So I did it that way for a little while, probably four or five times. And finally, he came forward directly in a channeled state and said, you know, it's time. If you want to do this, we can do it. So I channeled him uh, and Treb. Well, Treb from 2010 and, and Arda from about 2013, 2014-ish uh, for many years. And when I met my partner, who I'm with now, uh, we were together back in 2014. At that time, I started channeling full time. Mm -hmm. Instead of just, you know, on the weekends or, or every few days, like every day. And the more I channeled, the better I got at it. And the better I got it, the more energy moved through me. And then a whole bunch of other beings stepped forward. Now, Artif and Trev were always able to channel other entities. Um, but Metatron, which uh, a lot of people kind of think of like an archangel, um, mm -hmm. even though it's not really how I consider it. <laughs> yeah. That being came forward and, and the Nihal Collective came forward, which is connected to Treb's race. They were like the mentors to Treb's race, but also future version of humans. Hmm. So I started channeling those collectives and um, I started channeling Metatron more. And when you get to this point now, um, I have channeled thousands, a thousand or more EC consciousnesses. But mm -hmm. if, if you want to know who Treb is, the uh, identity of Treb, Treb is a reptilian human hybrid, a highly benevolent, a type one being who sees its oneness and connects with love and sees um, himself as part of everything in the universe. Like he's connected to all the things. Um, and his location, if you look out in space, would be Capella, the star that we call Capella. He's from one of the four stars that exist in there, uh, in that four star um, system. And mm -hmm. then if you look at Ardiff, he's a sixth density being. And where he exists, um, he's the ancient Pleiadian because his race came from the Pleiades to where they are now, which is Dinib, which is in the um, Cygnus constellation, the Swan. Uh, and he is a sixth density um, ancient Pleiadian being who's very insightful. I always say that Treb is the very loving, mm -hmm. uh, very gentle, kind soul. And then Artis, the more um, teacher oriented. He's more, uh, his excitement is to share in depth knowledge. So he shares about mechanics of the universe and mm -hmm. how consciousness works where Treb uh, connects with people on, on a more personal day-to-day -day life level. Um, but both of them are amazing. Um, yeah. They're both completely different, but the energies of them are very similar about what they share and how they see things because they're both type one beings. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's it. Yeah, that's a little bit about Artif and Treb and, and who they are. That's a fantastic summary. I, I imagined it almost as perfect as that. And then if you, you exceeded my expectations in, in how wonderful of a summary that was. So when I, when I first laid eyes on Rob and Treb, I was watching, um, uh, Ruben Langdon's show, which 
many of you put listening maybe are listening for you know hearing this kind of material for the first time but there's a great show on Gaia called Interviews with Ed Ed stands for extra dimensionals um and Rob is featured in the first season along with an array of incredible channels but Rob has three different parts of the show he has an interview with himself which you can hear his full story which is phenomenal and uh absolutely captivating and wonderful um and gives you a little idea of what can happen if you if you really dedicate yourself to yourself to to meditation and mindfulness and expanding your consciousness um wonderful and crazy things can happen and and also where i met treb who ju just blew me away and i um i felt such a connection to to treb now i had I, you know i didn't know ruben i didn't know rob but when i saw Ru ruben talking to rob and then treb and then Ar you know eventually uh, artith i i had such i felt such love for these human beings that i knew that i was going uh to meet them I mean, I, I I knew that they were going to become a part of my life. I had no idea how, but I went to bed that night and um, I, I I I had dreams of Treb and and it was it was it was it was wild. It was crazy. Um, and then sure enough, I went on a, a contact retreat with Reuben Langdon, and uh, we were in Hawaii right before um, the world uh, decided to shut down. Uh, and uh, and and. So Ruben was one of my first guests and I reached out to Rob and, and we became friends and it, it, it's just amazing synchronicities, but, um, you, you check out Rob's channeling, check, listen to Treb and listen to Artif. I mean, some of the most incredible information comes through, uh, Rob from them. And, uh, and I've spent, you know, time with both of them and I spent time with Rob, you know, in, in, he has wonderful um, teachings about channeling, about meditation, about putting yourself in the state to channel. If you have any interest in that, this is the man you want to seek out. And uh, yeah, that's just kind of full disclosure on my end. Um, but Rob, what I wanted to ask you, and it's funny you mentioned it, you know, I think the last time we spoke, you had been taking a break from channeling Metatron. And so, you know, Metatron, because he has that incredible insignia, the, na the name is, is well known because of the geometry involved, you know, in Metatron's cube. But people, some people, like you said, think he's, he's, a, he's an archangel energy. He's a, you know, other people aren't sure what he is. <laughs> but two questions, what, you know, have, have you begun to channel his energy again? Uh, and I say his, I just, I feel like it is a masculine energy, but Rob can speak to that better than I can. And also what's like, what's the difference for you sensorily between channeling, let's say Metatron and then Treb and then Ardiff? Yeah. Uh, so I have started channeling Metatron again and, and I'll, I'll get into that in a minute, but, uh, the way I, the way Metatron describes himself when channeling through me, the way that Ardiff and Treb have described Metatron when channeling through me, is that he is a being who exists at the highest level of the matrix. Okay, so the matrix being not just our universe, but all the levels of consciousness in the universe. Mm. And this is where it gets a little, uh, a little complicated, but. In our universe right here, you have multiple dimensions. And in those dimensions, there's evolution levels called densities. And if you go up, uh, that's a higher dimension. So you've got uh, the dimension that we're transitioning into is the fourth density, uh, which is a fifth dimension. And our consciousness is uh, more third density, which is fourth dimension, which is why we still perpetuate that experience. But if you've noticed, the last 18 years, especially, um, everything in our whole planetary energy has shifted. Mm -hmm. Like it's hard to explain it for, for people who are younger than I am in the eighties, there was this feel to it and it was solid and it was uh, permanent. And even though traditions change and people's behavior change, 
the system of energy was very, very structured, very similar across all the lines. Uh, if you if you lived in the time of World War One, you knew what it was like in World War Two with just better weapons and different players, right? Mm -hmm. um, it, it's like that. But after that, things started becoming less similar and and more fluid and shifting and changing. So, if you go up those levels of evolution, that's a density. That's not a matrix. A matrix exists with our universe having 12 different layers, and each of those layers is closer consciousness to source energy, a mm -hmm. creator energy. So there's the first number one matrix that's like a, a universe that has no life. That's just rocks, fire, electricity, mm -hmm. water, all elemental things. And then we're at about the fifth, fourth or fifth, I think. And then when you get up really high, these are beings who are directly connected to source, right? Their consciousness is huge. There's, there's only like 13 in one planet. So mm -hmm. their 13 consciousnesses equals every human, every, uh, Atlantean, every Lumerian, Lumanian, Kunki, all, mm -hmm. all of these different races that live on earth, all their consciousness together would equal these 12 entities. Wow. So they're extremely huge and powerful and, and their consciousness is so big that I can only channel like a, a yeah. sliver of that, right? A tiny little fractal of that energy, which is why when you hear people say I'm channeling Archangel Michael or uh, Samael or, or any of these Archangel consciousnesses, you're hearing different energies coming mm -hmm. through. Part of that's the filter, the channel, or part of that's the consciousness. When I've channeled him before, I stopped and I didn't do it for a long time because his energy feels like the old energy, uh. new energy that goes through it. So it feels very structured and it feels very demanding. So when I channel him, like normally, hey, I'm 10 minutes late to everywhere I go, right? Right. But when I'm channeling him, I, I'm pushed internally, not by his consciousness, not by a possession or anything like that, like some people um, have, have entertained, but I just feel internally driven to, to shift things. Hmm. So I, I took a break because I have a, a daughter who was born mm -hmm. and she came in with some health things that were going on with her. And I had to dig really deep back in the earth energy as a new, hmm. as a, a, a new old parent, mm -hmm. um, having a, a 20 year old when I had my, my newborn. Um, so I quit and I was like, I'm not, I can't channel his energy because if I get structured, I'm going to drag my whole family with me and it's yeah. not fair to them because I will be on fire going every five seconds. I'll have to be shifting and doing something and changing mm. something. And just momentum never stops going forward when I channel. So I did channel him <laughs> recently. And we've had an issue with the apartment complex that we've lived in. Yeah. And um, we've had, we had a, a shootout right in front of our apartment. Oh man. Yeah. Uh, the last apartment that we were staying. Yeah. Uh, police chase with a AR-15 shot at the cops. Like, oh man. 300 feet from my window. Yeah. It was brutal. And we just a lot of bad things and we tried to get out, um, but we couldn't find a place that we could rent until we could find something to buy. Mm -hmm. Just everything was really, really rough. And then I channeled Metatron and three days later, when the first time I channeled Metatron, we had a flood in our apartment, forced oh, us out. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's what I mean. It's always pushing you forward. It's a bit catalyst. Yeah. Um, Ready so or not. <laughs> it is. It's head dive or nothing, right? You can yeah. dip your toe, it's jump. And I didn't want to do it to myself or my family, but here I finally said, you know, I'm getting back into channeling yeah. uh, more and doing more everything so i'm gonna do metatron synergy and so instantly shift you know i it's funny you, you mentioned i was trying to explain to my 11 year old just just right before i came down here i i said uh you know i was complaining about having to take my my dogs to the vet because in order to get them you know a bath and, and a haircut they have to be up with their with their injections right and i'm like you know i was kind of quietly complaining and i was like 
you know, what I've learned in the last five years is that a lot of these don't have the kind of safety study data that a lot of people thought they did. I said, but what people, what a lot of people learned in the last three years from what they tried to do is that our injections don't necessarily have a lot of the safety studies that they thought they did. Um, and, you know, I'm talking a little bit, uh, maybe, uh, uh, what's the word, obtusely? Because, you know, it's a sensitive subject to talk about online, but you know what I'm saying. Sure. And I said to him, I said, so the result of, of, of them telling everyone that they had to take this thing is that now more people than ever are aware of just how kind of out of control this industry is. I said, that's the balance that happens, you know, that's the, the give and take that there's a, you can find that in all aspects of life in the universe. I said, you know what I'm saying? So everything is never always appearing to be all good or all bad, but it's, you know, it contains elements of both and both will reveal themselves. So he was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he just listens. He's 11. Um, but, uh, you know, it reminded me what you said, because it's like, you know, you're like, God damn, you know, but now you had but now you're kind of forced out and, and you don't know just how much good that's going to do you in the long run. Right. It, it's like a, like, dude, really a flood, <laughs> but you know, I bet you you're, you're in a better place now. Um, and, and maybe, or maybe yeah, that's yet to be seen. In the same apartment complex, but we're across the other side in the where we're at now instead of having 30 hor horrific neighbors we only have or bad neighbors we only have one okay uh, and we also have a river and a door with a porch where we could sit outside so small shift from where yeah. we are but it set us up to be able to cut contract now anytime that we want they gave us that permission now if we find a place we just go nice and we don't have to pay you know 60 percent more per yeah. month to live here month to month you know oh that's awesome that's cool so it was yeah and it's funny the apartment is the same exact apartment but a mirror image of itself wow. so instead of turning down the hallway to the left to go down to the bedrooms we turn when we come in the front door we turn to the right i so bet you take exactly a wrong turn opposite. when you're tired huh <laughs> i bet I, you i not anymore but a couple of weeks ago yeah. i definitely was bumping into everything <laughs> i bet yeah Oh man. I mean, I wish you, you guys the absolute best. I'm sure it's going to work, work Thank out. You. Yeah. But, uh, so, oh, yeah. so, so with Artif and Treb, you know, there, th there's such distinct personalities. If you got, if, when you guys get a chance to hear them, you, you'll notice that they're very, very, uh, distinct. There's, um, you know, they don't sound alike. They don't, I mean, the, their energy is similar. Of course, the, they're, their their channel is this is the same person but you know when you are channeling uh treb what you know what what is the can you sensorially sense the like what is the biggest differences between the two would you say actually the way that i channel both of them is different in the way i connect to their energy it's a different process uh, when i'm connecting with trev um there's a little difference in the way i breathe and the way i own mm. uh, same with art but when i channel it's all the same experience i'm going to visit with trev <laughs> right um and that's because i'm i'm a deep trance channeler so i'm going into an astral state when i'm channeling which is very unusual Mm -hmm. It's a very old energy, right? That's something that not a lot of people do anymore. Most people who kind of do channeling now are conscious channelers yeah. or semi-conscious or semi-trance. But so I go deep trance. And when I do, I'm spending my time with Trev wherever he's at. So if he's at his planet, I'm there with him. If he's at his ship, I'm there with him. And when I channel Ardiff, I'm also a Trev <laughs> because I get <laughs> that high level where, where Ardiff's at. Like Trev's here. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm down here. Trev comes down here to meet me. Artist way past there. I can't get to Artif, but yeah, I've seen him a, a couple times. Yeah, um, but not directly communicated and, and spent time with him like I do with Trev. So it's still the same. It's just uh, fascinating through that's different. So yeah, yeah, you've had some wild experiences yeah, with with Trev. <laughs> 
how often do you remember um like how often is it vivid it, like the details that you have from your trips with him like when you come back because you know i know that at least you know i just from my own experiences you know it's it's tough to when when you're on that plane you can you know you can you you bring so much back and that's why sometimes it's important if you have an experience to write it down because it's hard to contain in this physical matter you know it's 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 a lot of experiences a lot of energy and you you only end up bringing so much with you um but i'm wondering you know, how how often you can you remember, you know, I, I've heard you tell some amazing and hilarious stories about uh, experiences with Treb on his planet and, and, and just doing f things with him, you know? Um, but, but what's that like for you when like, is it, do you remember a lot or is it here, give or take? I remember everything now. Um, when I first started, I would remember probably 60%, uh, the first like a uh, few months that I channeled. And then I would remember maybe 65%. But after I start channeling all the time, I remember every single thing. Now, there are still times very rare when I don't connect with Treb. Mm. Um, sometimes I'm with Treb and I'm listening into the to the session. If it's a session that the person doesn't care if I listen to, because um, some people don't don't even have me record the session. So, mm. like I I don't I don't know anything that happened. Um, which is to the advantage of people who really want privacy about what they're talking about. Right. But um, like every time Kalina has a session, I listen in my friends, uh, William or John have a session. If, if they want me to hear a part of it, I listen in, mm. but I'm still with Trev, but there are some times when I'm not with them and I'm just, it's, it feels like a deep meditation where it's just nice. black. And I don't yeah. know if that's intentional. Uh, I don't know what it is. Other times Trev, just brings me somewhere to show me something yeah uh, instead of just me popping in and saying hey how's it going trev i'm here you know hey what are you doing like two friends that see each other every day do um instead i end up showing up somewhere like i'm i all said i'm at this planet and i'm looking down at a building with a bunch of beans in it, and he's like this is the race blah 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 yeah and i'm like great why do you want me to know this and i never need to know it right then right but in a month or two months when someone says hey i, I heard about this race or this i'm like mm. now i i know about that yeah now i know about that because trev showed me so it always comes there's maybe two or three times ever where it didn't end up being something else that was important for me to know or important for me to listen to mm. um but that happens and i would say now it used to happen probably one out of every 20 channelings now it's probably more like one out of every couple hundred channelings wow. i channel yeah a lot more now than i used to yeah uh, i don't channel as much as i did in, in 2015 2016 when all this energy really got rolling but um I used to channel then, you know, 10 times a week. <laughs> yeah. Which is out of control. Um, but especially the way you yeah, do it, still... it's a, it's a, it's a very intense process for, for you guys who don't know if you don't know, um, you know, the difference between, uh, a, a, a deep state trans channel is, well, I mean, a sincere one, <laughs> <laughs> a person who, who is really is, um, D doing it and knows how to do it you know is it is it is a it is a time commitment you know it is a ritual it is a process you know we're, and i'm not taking anything away from any other types of channels because i know some incredible uh channels who who are only semi-trans and some who who don't you know are, are not in any trance all of them uh, not all when i say all i mean the ones that i know <laughs> i don't mean all of them. um they i i have love and respect for for them but but very few people do it the way rob does it because of the energetic commitment because of it because it is um it's a very very uh it can be it can be more intense you know um but i you know rob i think it's, it's taxing some, to yes energetically yeah you know yeah I mean, I, I mean, just from seeing you channel and and from learning some of your techniques, I know I, I have experienced some of the. It's a, it's a it's an incredible uh, energetic tax, um, you know. I think much more so than than some some other channels who are you know. It's 
it's semi trans. Just it's just it's clearly you see them. It's less commitment than less energetic. Um, you know, cost so to speak. Yeah, but yeah, speak it's it's when I explain it to a person, it's like when I come out of a channeled state, it feels uh, like I just woke up after only being asleep for two or three hours, and someone snaps you out of sleep. Yeah, uh, you kind of like. Uh, disoriented, discombobulated, you feel ungrounded. Um, it's hard to focus. Yeah. You know, I, I'm better at it now than what I was uh, uh, all the years ago. But you're right. Some people, uh, th this is a, a misnomer too. A lot of people say, you know, oh, you're a trans channeler, so you're better. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> not necessarily. I have right. you know, channelers who are, you know, I, I think highly of my own channel, and that's why I've continued to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that's a bias from my from my own thing. I resonate with who I channel. That's why I channel them. Uh, that's why I've kept channeling. Yeah. But I, you know, I've seen channelers who are equally as good as I am, who are completely conscious. Yeah. And I've seen channelers equally as good as me, who are semi trans. So it doesn't always equate to a better channeling. Yes. But it definitely is more taxing energetically for sure. Yeah, that yeah, definitely. Um, and you know, look, each person is going to be every individual is different. You're going to resonate with, you know, the the if you're drawn to a channel, it's usually because there's something with the channel that has resonated with you and what the information that's coming through, you know. And I always say, follow your intuition, um, because you never know when you're going to hear something that's going to change the way you understand things. Uh, in a way that makes your life a little easier. You know, I mean, I think that's why we come across the people we do and experience what we experience, whether we realize it in the moment or not, it's important to reflect. You know, I mean, uh, I've learned a lot from Rob. I saw Rob the, for the first time on a, on a television show. <laughs> I mean, on Gaia, who I, which I was watching on my TV show. I mean, Gaia is a, a streaming app, but Gaia was just picked up, Rob. Did you hear that? By uh, by a cable network, I think. I think Greg Braden was telling us. I, I was at a retreat, like a weekend retreat, with him, and he said that guy was just picked up by either Comcast or one of the other ones. They're going to start offering the 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 programming, or the, at least the app on on one of the, the. I don't know. It's crazy, but it should. It's pretty amazing. It's going to increase the viewership. That's a game changer. Yeah. Yeah, that's huge. That'd be, I, I mean, I'm, there are still a lot of people who only do internet or uh, only yeah. do cable, you know, believe it or not, my mom's one of them. I know yeah. that, uh, a lot of older people who only do that, but, um, to mix that with the internet yeah. industry and that's amazing. I did not know that. That's amazing. It is. It's amazing. I love to hear that. Great news. I think, you know, I mean, uh, I, I just feel like this, you know, it's part of this awakening that that's happening. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. But, you know, first I want to get into, you know, I, I had a, uh, it's amazing the, 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 how the rep, reptilian um, archetype comes up in our society now more than ever, you know, with, with, with David Icke, who I had on my show a few months ago, and I, and I love David, I'm a huge fan of his, you know, I, and I was talking to Billy Carson, um, who I know is friends with Jimmy Church, who's your friend. Uh, you I, you got to talk to Jimmy for me one of these days and tell him to come on my show. But uh, uh, I would love to talk to Jimmy. But but Jimmy and Billy are friends, and you know I was asking Billy about if he believes what David Icke believes about about these about some of these families being literal, you know, reptilian hybrids um, with nefarious intent. Because I was like, it doesn't matter because they act like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like whether, whether they are or not, I mean, it, you know, I mean, but, but I, I have to catch myself saying that because, you know, it's not, it's a, it's a stereotype and it's not, it's not fair to say that because, you know, that, that pigeonholes all it reptilians and in your, you, you are, you know, a perfect example of someone who is connected to a benevolent, wonderful amazing big hearted excited um fun loving sentient reptilian from an advanced civilization that is directly connected with human civilization and so it you know but but it, again you know as well as i do that's kind of a rarity um but 
every race has individuals. This is what I'm realizing, you know, like Marina Serene talks about um, how free will in our universe um, has to be, it can't be taken over by blunt force. It has to be usurped through manipulation. And that that's what some of these uh, races and beings have gotten good at, right? And I look around this planet, Rob, and I'm like, well, humans are pretty freaking good at that too, okay? You know what I mean? Like, look what's going on. I mean, like, we this has become a, a human specialty. We specialize in this. I mean, particularly in, in elements of government um, and certain power structures, you know, they've gotten really good, unfortunately, at manipulating people to do something that they want you know, and, and convincing them that it's in their best interest to do, you know, I, I just posted a meme that said, how um, it had Joe Biden on the cover and it said, how many massacres must we orchestrate for you to ask us to take away your guns? <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to get in trouble for this, but post, <laughs> um, because yeah. it's, Did you get in trouble? I mean, not yet, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. It's young. I just posted it. Um, but I mean, like that's a minute. That's a that's a blatant man manipulation, you know, uh, and and so it obviously wouldn't surprise me at all to learn that you know there are other races that that do this and that take advantage of this you know this free willed universe we live in, and I'm just wondering, like, you know, having a direct experience with the other side of this um, reptilian coin, if you will what you know what are your thoughts on that and like you know is there validity to I, I mean i know there must be some validity to it but you know marina uh, she's she's incredible she's got me thinking about things that i never really thought about before like you know and some of the things that she's she's spoken about um and kind of called out if you will yeah yeah so there there's the thing the the reptilian manipulation is already kind of like a, a a well-known thing and uh, David Icke did a beautiful job of bringing that to the forefront but I think there's also a lot of people who take the information and misunderstand it really a lot right so draconian beings the the big evil the big reptilian bad guys that that we have um we're putting that in a frame of reference from the human perspective mm. and we're doing that because these beings had multiple hybrids across the entire galaxy one of them being uh earth reptilians which were dinoid manipulates just like we were manipulated from the anunnaki the dinosaur genes were also manipulated and that's where we get these beings that live on earth right so the draconians learned that manipulation from the free will you know a, shifting or, or, or fixing someone's perspective onto fear or releasing their ability to have rights in order to feel safe all of these things master that right these these beings are six density and a lot of people are, are surprised to even hear that mm. they're like how can they be so far in their evolution when they're negative bad and i'm like first of all you know that negative bad idea is a very human idea yeah first to, to start off with but it's also you know why do they do this, right? They came from a higher matrix, just like we were talking about the Archangel matrix. They came from one above us, and mm -hmm. they are one of the very first races that could traverse through that matrix with their whole race. Like they took every member of their race and came through. Uh, whatever was happening to them there, they didn't want to happen. And they thought that they could get better off here, right? So they brought their whole race here. And when they got here, they weren't liked. Uh, they're very uh, military oriented, mm -hmm. very militant, and also require a specific vibration in order to achieve them not going back to the oneness. Now, this is a long story and it's very complex, but if you think about it this way, what could make a being, um, you know, not want to move on to the next thing? they appreciate their identity right yeah they're, they're like i'm draconian i'm reptilian i don't want to be anything else and they are smart enough because they're evolved enough to mm -hmm. know that if they 
just do their normal thing and just continue being themselves that eventually they'll be pushed back to oneness. You have to, you're at mm. sixth density. The next density is a non-physical one. Mm. So when their incarnation cycles over, they got to go back. This is what they're doing. They're trying to prevent that cycle. They don't want to go back to the oneness. They don't want to be recycled. That's how they see it. Recycled. So a lot of people hate them and I'm looking at them like, wow, they really appreciate their physical reality yeah, and they don't want anything to change it. Now, does that mean they should try to manipulate people? <laughs> no, of course not. Right. That's horrible. Right. But when they give their genetics, they give them the gift. That's what they call it. They give the gift of their own genetics to these reptilian races mm -hmm. who come from reptilian animals, second density, or maybe even a third density reptilian being. And they give them their DNA and along with their DNA comes their tutelage and mm. their teachings. So what did they teach the earth reptilians how to manipulate the planet you're on will eventually have more races. Almost every planet does mm. special planets like earth that have abundant water levels and, yeah. and uh, tons of different biomes with different life. And when humans came along, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, and Kalina has been tapping into a ton of the history part of it uh, with her channeling recently. But from what I understand, there was an event that happened that kind of made them not get along. Like reptilians and humans first were mm. okay with each other. And they, they coexisted. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so now they use that manipulation and they've taught. Yeah, it's either because, like you said, there's hybrids of these beings with yeah. humans on Earth who pretend to be human or just, you know, the source of energy from the human is way more because there's a lot bigger population and yeah. our emotions run deeper. So we're throwing out all that energy. Why not teach powerful people how to manipulate? One thing you said that, that made me smile internally is humans are good at this. Well, of course <laughs> we are. We have a double shot of reptilian DNA and yeah. DNA. We have 12 different races of DNA inside of our own and two of them. One of them comes from the earth reptilians, which is part draconian. Mm -hmm. The other comes from the Anunnaki who are 50% draconian DNA. So ta-da. Yeah. We go figure. We're good at that, but we're, <laughs> yeah, but you know, so we're, so we're a certain Pleiadian races. A lot of people think Pleiadians are the best, beautiful, loving, Yeah. but you know, they started a war with the reptilian beings anyway, you know, mm. they, they're the ones who started a physical altercation, which led to a massive disaster, even here on earth. So it's not always as black as white as we see it. Yeah. Um, the, the blonde haired, you know, white humanoid beings aren't always the good guys and the green, ugly. That's right. Aren't always the bad guys. It's, it's, it's odd, but, you know, I, I know I, I went off into a whole different. No, no, I love it. I'm glad you did. Yeah. Getting back to that. I, I appreciate that. Getting back to the, to the question, you know, reptilians in general are more oriented towards neutrality to malevolence. Yeah. Trep said something like 80, 89% of all reptilian archetypes in this galaxy are type two beings. And operating from neutrality to malevolence. The other 11% are either type one beings or type two highly benevolent reptilians. Uh, this doesn't include hybrids from what I understand, although I would have, well, maybe it does. I can't remember, mm -hmm. but that's not a lot. That's, no, that's like one it's, sm it's a small, the yeah, out in the galaxy. <laughs> it's very rare. So, that's why they get the bad rap. Yeah. And in, in earth, we've only dealt with probably half a dozen reptilian races and yeah. most of them were the bad, yep. you know, feeling. Ones. Yeah. I feel like so that's, that's where I think it all comes from. It's definitely where it comes from. Um, you know, and people don't realize that, that with this DNA that we're, I mean, part of the resilience of this human, this amazing soft technology that we have been, blessed with it is that it, it it is in part the you know it comes from all these races and there is strength and diversity and you know part of the the durability and the toughness comes comes in part from the reptilian part of our dna i mean you know 
And if you think that that's like, um, that's not just, I mean, it is a metaphysical statement, but it's also a physical biological statement. If you want to look at DNA under a microscope and, and compare, you know, you're going to find similarities even between the human being and the crocodile. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to be like, oh my God, this looks nothing like this. No, there's going to be shit in common because we have common ancestors. We come from the same stuff, you know? Um, and part of the reasons why humans are so adept at this kind of manipulation, not only was, were we well tutored, but were we also, it's, it's a natural ability, you know? But I also think that, you know, some of the other things that come natural to us, you know, um, maybe from some of the other races, <laughs> um, you know, is also needs to be recognized. And, and some of those things are, you know, our willingness to risk ourselves and our physical bodies for our fellow human beings. And I think we get that's not just, you know, that that also falls into some of the reptilian uh, DNA. You know, not all of them are kind of, you know eat your young <laughs> some of them um maybe, maybe even most of them but but some yeah. of them are you know care for their young absolutely well you know this is the one thing that i love about reptilians at least the draconians and the earth reptilians they don't like humans right that's fine they don't like humanoids for the most part that's fine you know even though earth reptilians are more spectral they have a lot of really uh, caring and loving ones towards humans and ones that hate humans and, and draconians mostly just think of us as not important enough to think about. Right. One thing they do is they love their own. Yeah. And and even if it's just their own, the way that they love the other reptilians in their own race is phenomenal. You know, one being uh, in that collective matters to yeah. the whole. You know, they would never treat, they would never, never treat their own like we do. They yeah. would never murder one another for fun. They would never go to war with each other uh, just for fun. They would never do any of this for money or profit. They're too important. Even though they have that class system where, you know, hey, you're you're just a, a, a worker and it's right. just this. And, you know, then you have a higher military levels yeah. and all these different things. They still see the value in the lowest of the workers. Yeah. It's not the same value, but they still see value. You know how many people we dehumanize as oh a my society God. all the time? Homeless people, mentally ill people, uh, physically handicapped people, um, you name it. There's just dehumanization going over. Now Now it's fashionable to dehumanize each other for what person you vote for, what party you belong to. <laughs> yeah. And that's, it's just, I mean, that's kind of always been a thing, but yeah. you know what I mean now. But it's worse than worse, ever now. Uh, and, and they're, they're, they're yeah, systematically. And, and they wouldn't do that to each other. They're more involved than that. You know, I mean, they may, they may happily, um, you know, do that to other races that they don't kind of recognize or feel are, are, are worth you know, not exploiting, but they'll, they won't do it to each other. At least they're smart enough not to do it to each other. They're smart enough not to aim the guns at each right. other or the weapon, the nuclear weapons. <laughs> I mean, if you're looking down on this planet, how confused are, do you, do you imagine that these, you know, these, um, who souped up primates are, I mean, we, we literally have all the guns pointed at each other. It's fucking, it's, it's unbelievable. It's, it's crazy, but, but here we are, you know? Um, wow. Yeah. It's crazy, but, uh, it's crazy. <laughs> very, very crazy. It's like, you know, you have to laugh because if you take it too seriously, you'll cry. <laughs> oh man. Well, there's a lot of things to laugh and cry about. I, I know I try to balance those two. Out Me myself, too. But, uh, Me it, too, it's man. been a crazy ride this last three years. It it's has, crazy. <laughs> it has, you know, and I was with, uh, when I was with Greg Braden, he said, you know, he said to the audience and, and, you know, look, maybe this is, um, maybe this is the way it is. Maybe, maybe this is not, but, but he, Greg felt like it was, uh, uh, something that has become much more prominent everywhere. You know, he said, raise your hand if you've just recently lost someone really close to you. And I tell you what, man, about 85, 80% of the room shot their hand up, including me, you know? And I was like, damn, yeah. damn. He's like, we're going through 
a very transitional time, you know, and, and so there's a lot happening and people are losing, you know, their loved ones, um, to a variety of things. Uh, and he's like, it's hard. And, you know, he said something else that I agree with that I often say in one way or another. And he's like, you're all angels and you were never meant to see some of the things you've been exposed to. You know, you were never meant to see people hanging out of skyscrapers that are, you know, being burned from the inside out and then detonated. <laughs> Sorry, I had to say, I'm not going to say they fell down from a few office fires. It's just ridiculous. But you know what I'm saying? The, the trauma that we've been exposed to 1963 with JFK, what did the world see? They saw uh, a good man's head get blown off. You know, I mean, the, like the, the trauma that we've been exposed to, he was like, we're not meant to be exposed to these things. And, and I, and I agree with them. I did. And that's why it's really hard for people to um, imagine the structure of the world being the way it is, because people don't have that in them. You know, um, people I think are good inherently and, and, and that goodness makes them a bit naive. And it also keeps them from looking at some of these things too closely because I mean, you, you know, when, when, just like when you're a kid, if you hear something in the closet, most kids don't go open it up. Most kids get under the covers. You know what I mean? That is a human response to fear. Um, you don't go seeking out trauma. You try to avoid it. That is a natural human protective program. And I feel like, um, God, there's so much to what he said. You know, I just feel like there's been a lot of society itself has been hijacked in a lot of ways by some of these powers um, and, and that we were never meant to see some of the things we've seen. They've been orchestrated and manufactured for us so that we'll live in fear and give up freedoms. And I hate that, but um, I think it's all part of, you know, our evolution. I think we have to go through this. You know, everything's kind of been, we've been put on a fast track and, you know, I'm hoping that we get through it and that this, this civilization is the one that gets it right. <laughs> I hope so, man. I, I think, I think so. And, and you're right. We, we've gone through things that were needless to go through, um, from, from a standpoint of, of having trauma, we should have never been had to deal with much of any of it you know uh, even starting back in, in world war ii you know with yeah the, uh, the nuclear weapon detonation all the way through but, but um yeah you know I, I i did hear the same thing a couple of years ago i think it was in the 20 early 2020 uh ardiff said that there would be a, a huge shift in how many people were leaving earth because the shift of energy was actually meant to be done now when people were hyping up 2012 right yeah what trap was saying about it because artif didn't exist in 2020 or 2012 in my world mm -hmm. you know he, I, it's a name of a, of a being i heard but he's still way way away so what trev was saying 2012 was a pinnacle uh, of a larger cycle right and this cycle was 18 year cycle mm. and it started back in 2003 and ends when that's nine that, years on that yeah. side 2021 yeah and so i knew something was coming in 2021 for over 10 years i just had no clue it would be what yeah. it was. and he said in 2019 20, early 2020 uh next year when the end of the shift happens a ton of souls will be leaving because the acceleration will be too much for them yeah um so basically they're saying hey welcome to fourth density even though you're still operating as a third density being even though uh the consciousness you put into creating things will make it go faster yeah it'll just make it feel so much different and that's why i was comparing the 80s to now because it does it feels so much different you know yeah we think a thought nowadays as a collective we're like man i really wish you know things would happen yeah and i wish our government would do this and that and then all of a sudden you just see shifts huge shifts happening yeah it's amazing yeah. dude like li yeah. like i was literally and, and i'm not i'm just saying obviously i tapped into something that 
you know, I've thought of before, but I've never really said out loud. But this last, you know, what happened in Nashville, I was like, what, what I don't understand. You know, if you if you visit any courthouse in this country, there are metal detectors and there are security. This is what we do when we don't want people to get away with bringing guns in and, and shooting up the place. I mean, th this is just like, this is common sense. It's been like this in every courthouse since the advent of metal detectors. We say we want to protect our children, but we don't have any, we, we won't install any, any way to protect them. We just continue to pretend like all this is a surprise. And, and, and meanwhile, we're glorifying the, the shootings on, on every media outlet. We know from studies that these people who do this study their predecessors, that they, they, they are absolutely studied the press. They studied the way that they did it. And, and, and that's because the, the, see the, the cycle is there and they're putting the next candidates in place. So if we know they're coming and we know the press is going to continue to sensationalize this because they have to, because they want the guns, you know, <laughs> it's on the agenda. Um, why not we just, why not just install metal detectors and security in every school period, period. You know what I mean? And, and then watch the numbers fall. The question is, do they want the numbers to fall? I said that, and and then all of a sudden, the two days later, my friend sent me an article that said, uh, Tennessee proposes installing metal detectors in every school. And I was like, what? Yes. Yeah. I was just saying that. That's a, that's a great idea. Um, but it's, a, you know, and then I saw it again. Someone else said it. And I was like, I must have been tap tapping into what people are finally realizing they can do and there's a monkey wrench for the uh for the globalists <laughs> that's the simple thing if you're if you're concerned about kids being shot in a school protect them by putting police yeah can fire or not fire detector metal detector that's it should be like that my son's school that he was going to just up to a couple of years ago before uh 2019 they had a door that was locked. You couldn't come in unless they knew who you were, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? At the front door. And uh, his was a special school for kids with special needs, but they've had metal detectors here in Kalamazoo in both of their schools for decades, you know, since I was a teenager yeah. in the 90s. So it makes sense to me, right? You don't want a gun in school. You put up a I mean, thing that detects guns. This is a simple gun. common sense solution. If you truly want it to stop, you know, stop with the catchy slogans, stop propagandizing the suckers into saying, take the guns. <laughs> I won't say what I was going to say, what else I was gonna say. but you know, I mean, because, you know, we have, we have the first and second amendment and we have them for a reason, but you can't really have the first without the second. That's what I believe these days. I didn't always believe that, but that's where I'm at right now. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't blame you. I'm like, you know, uh, I grew up around guns. I don't, I don't see problems with guns because all the guns I've ever been around were safe and people who yeah. know how to use them, hands, people who own them legally, people, you know, I, I hung out with a, a group that yeah. in my teenage years, that was the opposite. And they were the ones who would shoot someone. Yeah. They were the ones who would shoot someone in a, in a street fight. Um, oh, you got three people. It's only me. Boom, boom, boom. You're all dead. Yeah. You know, yeah. now what's up? And that that was that group. So I seen very drastically the different in in the behavior of people who didn't get them the way that you should, right? Compared to how you did with people you did, and um, you know, a lot of people argue the point out, but the Second Amendment w was not there for for hunting or for no. for sport. It was there so that um, the public could arm themselves. That's right. Absolutely. The government, if it became tyrannical, Unequ you know, unequivocally, that is exactly what it was for. And I never really understood why until these last five years, <laughs> I was like, but yeah, but now it's clear anyway. Um, you know, I wanted to ask you, a lot of people are awakening and a lot of people are on the precipice of it, right? They're right on the edge of it. And, and I think what holds them back is, is fear of the unknown is, is doubt. You know, um, a lot of people are getting 
it broadcasts from their intuition, but they're also not in the habit of letting that that voice come in, right? You know, they're they don't trust it or they don't they don't recognize it, right? I mean, a lot of people mistake their anxiety for their intuition. You know, there's it takes a level of discernment that comes with um, a quiet mind, I think, to to really start to discern the differences. But, you know, what would you say to people who are circling some of these ideas and thinking about, you know, considering them, but, you know, or maybe being held back, you know, for, for some of the same reasons why, um, you know, Esther Hicks was not allowing uh, what's her husband to bring that book in the house, to bring Jane Roberts in the house. She said, she said, get that book out of the house. She thought it was a book about possession and demons. <laughs> you know, I don't remember that famous story about when, when her husband brought in um, the book about Seth and Esther made him read it outside the house. <laughs> I never heard that. Story. Yeah, that's a true story. Yeah, I didn't even know Esther Hicks existed until after I met Kalina. So, like, 2015 is the first time I heard. Oh wow! I've been channeling publicly and professionally for five years. Isn't that crazy? That's yeah. crazy. My most people don't realize she's a channel. You know, it's yeah, cra which is crazy too. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 weird how the the energy for that works. A lot of people. Um, knew about I, I i don't know why i don't but um i i'm always disconnected from the channeling community. yeah I, I listen to some channeling as a channeler i just i like my guide so i listen to them yeah um if people are having problems with their intuition or having problem trusting themselves or having a problem where they feel like they're getting uh, you know tapping into something but they're not quite sure this is the biggest hurdle this is the when i teach people how to channel that's num hurdle number one. That's mm -hmm. the only real big hurdle for most people is self-trust. Um, it's hard to do, especially when you are calibrated to be a person who wants an objective truth or an objective lie, um, or, you, you know, or you want something in black and white, mm -hmm. no in between. It's really hard to do that. I'm that person. I'm the, the mentally heavy person. This is why the only way I ever was able to channel would have been trained. Yeah. I can channel consciously now, but I never would have got there if I was practicing uh, being yeah. a, a conscious channeler because my mental energy just runs too heavily, too much. Um, trust for yourself is a repetitive process that you have to prove yourself. This is something that that none of us can do. Oh, I've never done this. I'm confident everything will be fine. <laughs> you know, that's not something as humans we do. Mm -hmm. We have to second guess the situation, the experience, ourselves, or the person across from us. You know, well, they're messed up. I don't want them, in, you know, my, my life right. or my energy in their hands. So we have to, to learn to teach ourselves, um, basically, to, to look at that little by little. So something Trevin Arif suggests is uh, when when we're doing these channeling things is to practice channeling your higher self because that's the yes. most important part, right? Mm -hmm. Well, how do you do that? Well, you start off with yes or no answers, okay? Well, well, some people might just say, okay, should I sell my house? Yes. Oh, well, I heard yes. I'm selling. Most people would never do that, but right for for people who listen to that and would extract that. As humans, we have to teach ourselves that what we're doing is right. So you start off small. What is something inconsequential that if I get it wrong, it's not going to derail my life, right. right? Higher self. Should I wear this cat shirt tomorrow in public? You know? No? Okay. Should I wear this shirt? Yeah. Okay. It doesn't matter, right? If I get it wrong, I'm not going right. to give up anything. But it's still something I can test out and put in the water. Mm -hmm. So I wear the shirt. And the first thing happens when I'm out in public, oh man, you know, that shirt, it's a great that, shirt. I love that. Yeah. I love that character. I have a book. Yeah. And, and it leads you into a conversation about something else that you love or something else you're interested in, right. or spirituality or meditation or conversation with a higher self. It could be anything that tells you, you were right. Mm -hmm. You did the right thing. You followed your higher self. So you start off small, something where 
gamble. It feels like a gambling. That's the problem. When you're doing something right. initially with your intuition, it feels like a gamble. So you have to make sure you don't lose too much. Right. And then you teach yourself the second time you ask the question, you go out with different shirt and you get the same experience. Now we're starting to prove to ourselves yeah. that, that our intuition's right. These types of things. Sometimes, you know, people don't want to do the, the higher self or the channeling. And I get that too, but intuition in general is the same way. I feel yes. like this is going to be a thing. I feel really bad about it. I don't know why. I'm just going to calm down and try to observe it. And then you observe it. And when you see that what you felt was bad turns out bad, you have your answer. My intuition mm -hmm. was right. The problem is we get too attached to that. We, we say, um, I feel bad about that. Oh, my God. Now I got to start worrying about it. Now I got to start thinking about this every day. And Oh, my. Yeah. No, Jesus Christ. Something's going to horrible. Just when you feel it accept your feeling you know don't don't try to over process it because the processing up here yeah is not going to get you anywhere and only processing in your emotional reactions isn't going to get you anywhere either you right. have to do both it's a mix it's a it's a common sense and a mental state mix with your emotional state it has to feel and seem okay but you have to be able to be consciously unconnected to the to the outcome yes in all honesty, to be able to use your intuition well. You have to say, well, this is how I feel. I might be wrong. I might be right. I don't care either way. This is just how I'm feeling. And then watch the experience unfold. And it's so hard as humans. We want to hurry and get the yes. end of everything. We want to know if we're right or wrong. Um, but it, it is. It's something that you have to do and have to practice and, it's... and have to check yourself you know yeah and if you and if you do it and look there's a lot of ways to do it you know and it, and it literally could take you if you spend five minutes a day but but what i found to be helpful is and, and once you open this connection then then like any other habit it requires less and less conscious thought it just it's just kind of there for you you know like when you get in the car you don't really got to think oh let me check the mirrors. Okay. My hands are in the right place. You know what I mean? It's not like you're not learning to drive every time. It just becomes second nature. But you know, if you can begin to, you know, first close your eyes and then breathe in and out of this, you know, sometimes it helps to put your hand here. You kind of activate this, this center, this heart center. Right. And then you start to ask simple questions that you want to, that you want to know from your, it from your heart. The wonderful thing about this part of the body is if, if any part of the body can be unaffected by this massive amount of polarization that is happening on this planet, living on this planet, no, there's nothing that is not affected by it. But, but this, this intersection, this cross section, this heart, you know, is the only part of your body that is perfectly you know um what's the word you know it, it it it's non it's not it's not divided like the hemispheres it's not you know it's not divide like top and bottom like the chakras it, it is literally perfectly in the center so so you'll have the best chance of getting the best answer from your heart if you learn to tune in that way and then trust the answer that you get it's the first answer that comes it comes without thought you know and Michaela Sheldon gave me a great trick years ago. She said, take an elevator from your mind down into your heart. And once you're down there, you know, press the button, go down. Once you're down there, stay down there and then ask your questions. That's, and then you'll get your answers. Then you can go back up to your head where we all love to live. But if you start to live from this place, answers come from this place. That's what I've found. Um, and, and then, and then once you get those answers, it's like, oh, thank God, you know, you once you start trusting them, you don't second guess them. You just kind of like, oh, that, that's a relief. I'm glad I got that answer. You know, it's with whatever you don't second have to, answer, yeah, right? and you don't have to second guess it. Imagine the relief in that, being like, okay, whew, got my answer. I'm I'm gonna go with it. You know, um, yeah, I found that to be very life changing. That that practice. You, what you said was very profound too. The the symmetrical nature of the heart exists on vertical and parallel mm -hmm. lineage at the same time. 
it just blew my mind. I never even considered that. It's so beautiful. It's right. I, there's a name for it. It starts with a V, but I forgot. It's like the, it's the, it's ventricle. The, yeah. Well, yeah. Ventricle. Well, oh. but it's the intersection. It's, um, I don't know, they talk about it in paintings and hmm. there's a, there's a fancy name for it. Maybe I'll find it, <laughs> put it in the video description. <laughs> but that's amazing. Yeah, man. You know, it, it's, it's something that, that I found in my own life is that when I'm living to be happy, when I'm living to help others be happy, when I'm living to, to kind of be there, I am in generally well balanced. My intuition comes quickly. Mm -hmm. I'm often, if not most of the time, if not always, right about how I'm feeling about a situation. Even if I'm not right for the big picture, I'm right for me, right? I'm like, oh, well, you know, other people are getting something out of that, but I didn't need it. Yeah. I'm glad I stayed away from it, right? That happens. And when I'm, when I'm living in a place where I'm only thinking and I'm only processing the mental body, um, that's where most of my, my traumas oh, come yeah. from. And I had a huge shift after the baby came. I had to ground in the earth energy. I, I was li so used to living in that etheric uh, channeled energy. And I just live, breathe, eat. Yeah. Channeling, channeling, channeling. But after that, I, I just got sucked out real quick because I was like, baby's coming. And I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. You know, my shoes have to hit the dirt. I have to get back here on earth and I have to get shit taken care of to provide the safety. Yeah. And, and longevity of my new seed right? yeah. that's instinctual it's it's primitive uh uh but it, it it's it's instinctual right yeah so i come back down and i start doing that and i realized when i started getting mixed in with all the craziness that was happening there and i started you know attaching these really heavy thoughts and heavy emotions mm. to it man life life shifted in a really bad way uh, yeah you know, not my channeling and not my, my spiritual work. That was something I've always been able to compartmentalize my life with my yeah. spiritual life very well. But everything in my life was just kicking my ass repetitively and I couldn't get a break. I couldn't stand up. I felt like every time I tried to, I get kicked back. Down. Yeah. But in this last year, year and a half, I've really shifted much further out of it than I was. And part of that's my spiritual practice. I'm channeling every day. I got used to like when, before I channeled, I was meditating every day, yeah. all day, like several hours and hours and hours a day. And then when I started channeling full time, 10 times a week, yeah. right? So you got, you got, like who has energy? I didn't yeah. need to meditate. Yeah. Right. Well, I, that was my meditation. My channeling was my right. meditation. That was my grounding and connection to, to the spirit. But then I went down to three times a week of channeling and, um, all these heavy energies and i did that too so i realize um when i'm not doing i have to either get in nature or i have to find a way to meditate yes in those times where i'm not because if i go so sparsely with that energy yes um, it, it's not a great thing so yeah i think meditation is is a huge part of that intuition processing also you know you know when i spoke to you a few years ago you told me how you 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 know, you you basically are like, you know, working, 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 channeling, channeling, but you, you don't have really, you said you didn't have time to meditate. And, and you also said that, you know, but, but what I, and I understand that when you, when you are channeling, it is, it is like, it is a meditative state, but it's, but it's different because when you're meditating for you, you that's a liberation of energy, right? That's a parceling out of the old. And when you're channeling for someone else, well, it can be, I think most of the time it's, it's, it's more of a, you know, you're using more energy uh, as opposed to liberating it for you. And I, yeah, and I wanted to, it to others, yes. Right? And I wanted yeah. to tell you that, Good but call. I, I, I felt so called to tell you that, but I didn't feel like, like, you know, I just finally got, got you on the podcast and we've grown a lot closer since then. Um, and I, and I, and I even wrote, um, in my, my notes for today. So I was like, mention some, mention to Rob about, about the power that he has to manifest whatever he wants, because you're already living in alignment with, with, with your heart and you're, and you're doing what you love and you're helping so many people. And so 
for you to begin to manifest some of the things that, you know, have been seemed kind of dodgy to you, you're going to be able to do this really quick. And especially if you use a little bit of meditation and a little bit of affirmations with no attachment. I mean, like I see it, I see it. And I wanted to encourage you to, to do it um, because you, there's God. just no reason why you can't have everything that you're dreaming about. You know, you got, everything is aligned for you. You just have to put a little bit of your intention and energy into you more of what you want to see show up in your life and it'll show up. I, I'm, I know it will. I know it will. You, you're absolutely right, brother. That's been something I'm horrible at doing. Um, I, I give myself this much energy and everyone else this I much know. too. And um, I do it for my kids. I do it for, for everybody. And this is something, you know, do for yourself. You can't do for others if you're not doing. This is a lesson I've been learning really hard yeah. in the last couple of years. And the, this year has been a little better, but I'm still pushing myself on, on it's tough, the front man. for others uh, a lot more than I myself. Yeah. I know. You're right. I do need that intention and that time in for me. And and look, I'm, what I'm what I want to guarantee you, and I learned this the hard way too. And I laughed at this notion when it was introduced to me years ago. But you know, I had a, an angel, my 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 dear friend, who she's departed now. Um, but she said, you know, you're putting the horse before the cart. And I was like, if I don't have time to do the work I need to do what, how am I put, what, what, what horse is there? What, how am I putting the horse for the car? And she said, no, you don't understand the way reality works. She said, you, if, if you do this work, you won't have to do that work. It'll just happen for you. And I was like, listen, I don't know what you're selling lady, <laughs> but I didn't really understand what she meant until I started meditating and I got into, you know, and I, and I learned what she meant. I learned firsthand what she meant and she was right, you know, and, and I, and since then I, I catch myself doing it too, but I, but I go back to it. I'm like, do not, don't get stuck in that old way of thinking. Cause it's not, it, it's a lot of energy with not a lot of return, you know? And so why not take care of you first? And then, then these things tend to take care of themselves with ease. So I, I, I've been waiting a long time to encourage you and remind Thank you, you to do that. Yeah. Thank you. I do appreciate it. I, I realize too, how much investment this is, this, I, we might've even talked about this on your last show, but to me, my, my problem has always been, uh, my Achilles heel of my spiritual journey has been my children because there's a level of gift that I give to them mm -hmm. that goes beyond what is required from most people and most parents, you know? Yeah. Um, my son is like a full-time thing, you know? Um, yeah. There's that. And, and we only have half the time, but now Lily's come along and she's had some medical things yeah. and some developmental things uh, that have been rough. My problem is I become so attached to the outcome for them mm. that when they're upset or not feeling well or not happy, then I'm not happy. Yeah. I can't, I can't do that either. You know, no. that's, that's how toxic relationships are. You yeah. You're like, oh, sweetheart, why aren't you happy? Yeah. Everything to make you happy. And that just, that gets old quick, right? Yeah. But for our kids where it seems like we're willing to go further for them. And, and I mean, in, in a lot of ways we should, Yeah. in that way we, we should. No, in that way we shouldn't. And, and, you know, that also comes from a place in you that is, that is still healing. That is, that is, yeah. you know, that, that, that place in you that, and I know it, believe me, I know it. Um, because I still have it very much in me, but I, but I, but I have to keep it in check because, you know, I, I have to allow them to be without trying to change the way that they're feeling about something um, just because it breaks my heart. It feels like it's breaking my heart to see them feeling it. You know, I mean, there's no greater pool on a person's heart. I think than that, than seeing their child go through something that they, that feels like it's happening to them. Right. But that yes, part that, I, yeah, it's tough, man. It's, it's so hard. Um, it's brutal. Yeah, it, it does. It be, yeah. It's a challenge, but, uh, but, but, you know, w once you start succeeding at w once you start doing it more and realizing that, you know, all you're doing is 
you're healing yourself, you know, you're, you're unraveling some of those old traumas that's going to liberate energy. That's going to make everything manifest faster. And you're also going to be able to see and recognize, you know, more so that this, you don't want the cycles to repeat on, on, on them. Right. And so the more you heal, the less, the less that ancestral trauma that we, that we all pass on in one way or another is going to be uh, in effect for them. Yeah. Yeah. Think about all the things we see in our parents do that our grandparents didn't do the things we're doing that our parents didn't do. If we don't cut some of that shit out, then they just get the worst of the worst. Yeah. From that. But it's, it's also the level of, of the energy. I, I didn't realize how much trauma I had and just the fact of being a parent mm -hmm. um, with my son until I had Lily. And it was so crazy. I was like, yeah, you know, really bad, really heavy and really messed up shit happened to my son. Yeah. Uh, which caused him to have these problems and these problems are everlasting. And there was an expectation in my mind I had about who he was going to be and what he was. Gonna yeah, be man what happened to him was just so horrific man right but i'm thinking the whole time like i'm good about this yeah everything's cool you know that's old news you know he's 20 years old of course i'm healed from that <laughs> and and then lily comes and i was like holy shit their their births were almost identical yeah um in in the way that they were happening with the rough pregnancies and the 26 hours mm. and the 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 end of it the all these things ended up being so alike that it just instantly pulled up all that oh stuff my that god i yeah. thought was gone dude i thought and then it shows gone. up in your body <laughs> and your body's like you know your body kind of throws you out of the way and it's like uh-uh we know we know what's gonna happen here you're like no wait no wait wait it's not happening and your body's like you get the hell out of here We're, we got this <laughs> it's like a total takeover man it's you know and you're, you're like oh my god and this whole time I thought I could get away with not addressing this. And then now here it is. Wow. And then you're like, man, and then, then you got to, then you're working on the spot in real time, trying to get over this. Well, yeah. I think the worst part for myself was that I'm a pretty self-aware dude. Right. I, I, it's like, I know what, what I'm doing. That's right and wrong. And yeah. I, I know when I'm making excuses. I thought that, I did do all the work on that. Wow. I was like, it's yeah, no, you know, yeah. it's rough. He's a soul. He's got to do wrong. Yeah. <laughs> the work I did was the work I thought I needed to do. Yeah. But the trauma wasn't gone. Just the mental work, the mental yeah. being okay with yeah, it. Yeah. See, there's a difference because the trauma gets yeah. stuck in the body, right? I just found this uh, awesome uh, breathing technique and he has online classes and so, so they're finding that with this, with this breathing, the, the, the trauma that gets stored as a, as a, as a neuropeptide in the body in sometimes in an organ, sometimes in a muscle, you know, cause that's where the emotion gets stuck, it gets stuck. The body's like, oh, I can't do anything with this right now. And joy and happiness. Those neuropeptides are easy. The body knows what to do with those. It sees those. It's like, let's metabolize those right but fear and pain the body's like ah oh, shit i don't know I, I i can't i can't i can't take care of all this right now let me just put it here for later and then it never gets it back out and it gets stuck in the body and so this breathing has been shown scientifically to release these neuro neuropeptides that are stored as trauma in the body and that's the way that i think you know one of the cutting edge ways that we're healing ancestral DNA in real time, because then those peptides, we, they also know that they're, they can be passed on. And so it's like, you know, we, we heal them for the next generation. We heal them energetically. We heal them physically, but I got to send you this website because this guy, I'm going to have him on my podcast. Uh, I got to reach out to him, but we did like this incredible hour long breathing session. Um, and I mean, it was, it was almost like a, like a, like a ayahuasca ceremony towards the end of it. There was so much energy being liberated and freed and it was, it was, it was intense. And it's something like, he's like, since, you know, since the, the pandemic hit, you know, we noticed that we, we can work very well over zoom and we've expanded. So, you know, it's something you wouldn't have to go see, you know, you can check it out. Um, it, it would be pretty awesome. I, I'm going to do it again. And, 
you know, I, I do a lot of this work because I feel like I have a lot of trauma. So, so, um, yeah. you know, I, I'll send you a link to it and I'll include a link in the video description for everyone who's stuck Please around. Please do. With. And that actually, the, you know, you just cleared up a lot of things for me because Ardiff and Trev have always talked about the energy of trauma in the body. Right. And, and we know that, you know, you, yeah. you get too stressed, your, your stomach hurts or your neck hurts. So I kind of correlated it to that but with some energetics on top of it, you know, like mm -hmm. well, the energy settles and that's why we develop illnesses. So I really had that connection drawn, but physically what's happening, I never assumed. I just assumed stress equals bad for the body. Yeah. Energy settled in one place without moving equals bad for the body. But I didn't realize how that actually puts in the last piece of the puzzle for me. That makes a ton of sense. Yeah. Yeah, I'd love to see that. Hear about it. Yeah, man. It's a, you know me, man. Yeah, it's a, it's a, oh, and you would you would take right to it because you know you you already you you I know you breathe very when you're neutralizing, and so this would be just like an expansion on that. And I mean, it's 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 awesome. It's it's really awesome. I mean, like your whole body's so oxygenated, right? Some people have like really some people like find themselves in a past life it gets it gets very cool and very intense um because it frees up so much stuff but uh I'll definitely i'll shoot you a link to that and uh thank you brother that's gonna be great yeah you're welcome you're absolutely welcome so i know that we're running out of time and i'm gonna let you go and it's getting late here too but you know before you go i'm wondering where you know i know that we have this infinite um possibilities of timelines and that you know and, and i know that they're all existing really right next to each other in a lot of ways um and i and i am hopeful for for humanity and i'm i'm wondering you know from your from your channelings and from treb and Artif, you know have you gotten a sense of the next five years and 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 you know the different scenarios that might play out with everything going on um has there been any kind of like oh well any yeah <laughs> yeah yeah some things uh you know the the thing i i mentioned a while ago art if it said a lot of souls would be leaving that's not gonna this it, it'll slow down a little bit but that'll continue for the next few years yeah. you know um the other thing is the possibility of that that opens up energetically for other people. You know, I, I'll leave it to smarter minds than myself to know if we're overpopulated or, or underpopulated. As I, I actually understand there are debates about that with people. Yeah. You know, like we, either way, less people will free up energy in some areas and tighten energies in others, right? Mm -hmm. It happens with every collective action has a reaction, right? So that's going to be one thing we're going to have to to feel that. But the timelines that I feel are going to be a couple of a couple big things, you know, like 2019 was a big thing, right? But there was a lot of little things that smacked us in the face mm -hmm. along the way and said, "Hey, are you paying attention or not? Hey, what's going on here? Yeah, hey, uh, this is something you got to look at on your own life." And there's going to be more of that, and it's going <sighs> to. For most of us, it'll feel easier if we accept what, mm. what the energy is between. But the one thing that Trev and Artif both have said is the place where we come out on the end is with community, mm -hmm. right? If we take care of these areas, our, our, our little towns, our neighbors, and we start to connect to them and get that to be unified, that brings unification in our own life, mm. our own personal families, all this stuff. And then you know, if you can get a whole town of people communicating, even if they're not on the same page, a system of communication yeah. that everyone can partake in. You know, you you believe this, I believe that. It doesn't matter. We can still talk right. about the things we all need in our lives. If we can do that in each town, the collective energy moves forward. So that's the direction they, they said that's happening. Hmm. I love that. Each community is starting to see what they need for themselves and on and on. As far as probabilities, I know a lot of people are, are concerned about uh, contact, right? Open contact, yeah. um, disclosure. That's another big thing. Um, some of the estimates are, you know, 30 years out for landing on the White House lawn. Yeah. 
press conference UFO. That's the, you know, most probabilities that are relevant are 30 years or so. Out. Yeah. Um, there are some probabilities where that can happen in a couple of years, but there's still, but then chaos would ensue. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's too way too much. Trauma yeah. We have to work out of course, yeah. as a collective before we can get to that. So these are kind of the timelines and the energies that I'm seeing. Trevor and if never get too specific because yeah. the energy of what needs to be shared uh, about the energies behind it to them are a bit more within the type one yeah. purview. You know, I, I, I love Trevor and Arnif, but type twos can be amazing because they can actually tell you shit sometimes, yeah. which is great. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and Trevor and Arnif, not as much. Yeah. Uh, they tell you the general sense of it, but uh, that's kind of where we're headed. You know, uh, they said you by about 20, 25 ish mid range, things will feel a lot better for most people. That's good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that's kind of where the main timeline is at this point. So cool. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I love that. And I have the same sense about community and people realizing that if we have each other, we don't, then, then we are independent. You know, we, we, we can look out for each other. In fact, that's what we're here to learn to do, you know, um, as a human family. And the, 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 you know, when, when one place starts to do it and another place sees how, how easy and, and joyful life can be without all that extraneous stress and, 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 you know, survival mode starts to take a back seat to, oh, okay, we, you know, we have this community, we have, we have enough food. We don't have to worry about, you know, being cut off. We can take care of each other. Um, I, I, I feel like that's where we have to go as a race, you know, and if it's, if that means, you know, um, you know, smaller communities at first, then that's, then maybe that's the way it has to be, but it, do, it, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing because what we're doing now, not only doesn't it work, but it's bad for the planet. It's bad for people. I'm trying to figure out what it's good for. <laughs> if I draw a blank, but, uh, we, we've got global communication yeah and that's you know that's the good that's come out of all yeah all for things. certain but you're absolutely right the the things trevor and Arif have said a lot of things about a lot of things leading up to this thing um you know 2022 20, 2023 20, 2024 20, looking at holes in the system seeing why the boat was sinking fix yeah. the boat throw it out the water out and then you know then sail on and we see that the school systems are broken. We see totally. that the uh, government systems are broken. We see the financial systems are broken. The farming systems are broken. Mm -hmm. uh, and the medical systems are broken. Fucking broken, yeah. We have to rebuild those in order to move on. Mm -hmm. um, we have to, but we can't rebuild it until people know it's broken. Yeah. And there are still people figuring this out. This is what I love about our collective that's beautiful. I know it's late there too. Um, and, and I'll try not to hold you too You're long, good, but th this encompassment of an idea, you know, uh, people who are more right leaning in the, in the, uh, political world, right. Mm -hmm. They said, Holy crap. Antifa is burning cities down. Holy crap. Mm -hmm. People are rioting, looting. Right. And the people on the left were like, no, no, you know, yeah. it's not that it's not that. And then January 6th comes along and then the other thing happens where, uh, you know, the right wing people get excited and, 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 and then the left people are like, look at these riots. <laughs> yeah. This has happened over and over and over again. We got justices, uh, for late, late term appointments to the Supreme court. We've got a hundred things that just in the last couple of years, one side did and said, this is good. <laughs> and the other side said, this is horrible. Yep. And then just a year or less later, this is great. You know, the other side is doing the exact, exact same thing. And people are seeing it now. People used to not see it, but the internet's there. Now you're forced to hear yeah. a, a left wing speaker. If you're a conservative that you don't like, you're forced to hear them pick out all the right wings, uh, uh shenanigans, yeah. just like, the left wing people now have to hear the right wing people say, look at all the shenanigans. 
this is beautiful because now we can see it's on both sides. Mm -hmm. They're cherry picking. This is the truth is in the middle. Yeah. That's what's liberated more people, I think, than anything. Seeing where the systems are broke. Yeah. And fixing that. And God bless us for, for fixing it. I've been grateful for you, brother, too, because you have been able to look at things and see them pretty quickly and see them for what they seem to me in a lot of ways and, and what they seem like to a lot of us and what kind of time has proven mm. that things are. And this is something that all of us will start being able to do by realizing the things we thought we saw that were there yeah. that weren't why they weren't. And, and we're giving up a, a blow by blow play this last couple of years. Hey, you're wrong. And this is why, Hey, you were right. And this is why. right. And that's something that teaches us really good. Absolutely. And it, you know, it's, it's a little bit of humility. It's a little bit of self-consciousness and self-reflection, right. you know, and, and being able to step back and say, I, I didn't, I didn't have that right. You know, um, and, and I'm, I'm more than willing to do that because that allows me an opportunity to learn. Do I have an ego? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm a human being on earth. I have an ego. Yeah. Would I prefer to be right? I mean, honestly, sometimes I prefer to be wrong. Yeah. Um, I know that too. <laughs> I've had a lot of those in the last couple of years. Like, I hope I'm wrong. You know, uh, I, a lot of times I'd much rather be wrong, but, but unfortunately it's not the case sometimes. Um, but you know, I, I, I think, I just was using this quote the other day. It's one of my favorite quotes. Like a great many people think they are thinking when they are merely rearranging their prejudices. And it's that you, you see that so often. I'm like, how do you not, how do you not see it? I mean, like, you know, just the other day in Nashville, a, a person went in and shot up a Christian school and six people died, you know, and this person had a manifesto. And they had a lot of um, what would have been considered hate speech towards Christians on their in their manifesto, but that manifesto was ignored. Now, if this situation was, you know, um, if this was a, a white and 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 they shot up a, a Baptist school, and this was, you know, the manifesto was anti-black, you know, it, it would have been everywhere on the news. It would have been white white supremacist hate crime. There would have been no qualms about calling it what it is, but because the situation is different, you have people who have completely rearranged their prejudices <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, and, and I'm like, how do you not notice all the exceptions being made to the way that we, we normally do things? I don't know, but you know, I'm, I'm hoping more people are stopping and being like, well, isn't that the same thing? <laughs> Isn't that a hate crime? You know, uh, let's hope you, so. You would hope. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the two biggest things I think that we f feel that help us really realize that we need to either keep going or change is vindication. Mm -hmm. When you, when you feel and you get that victory, it's like, oh my God, I'm glad I was, wasn't wrong. Or maybe I, I'm, I, I feel bad that I was right, but I wish I was wrong. Yeah. Or feeling like a dumbass when you're made to feel like a moron and you have proof right in front of your face those are two big motivators for change yeah. and all of us have been getting a lot of both <laughs> yeah thank god right yeah for sure <laughs> for sure yeah brother man it's so great to catch up with you rob it was a good time same here brother i always love our time together and the show is amazing too uh, i'm really glad I'm really glad you've been plugging those shorts, man. I've really been enjoying Thanks, it. Thanks, bro. I appreciate that. I never thought I'd be a short guy, but I, I've enjoyed uh, yours and, and another friend of mine who's been doing them. I've nice. I've really been enjoying your guys. Awesome to hear. Stuff. You know, I mean, they're good for the for the for some of the younger audiences have less of a attention span, but it also brings people into the channel. Hopefully, they stay for the podcast. But, um, Rob, tell everyone the name of your website. Tell everyone where they can find you so they know. Yeah, uh, etwhisper.com. Uh, if you want to get really daring, you could try robgothier.com. I don't suggest it unless you already know how to spell it. <laughs> also, um, anything, if you put e.t.whisper, you'll be able to find me. That's where most of my accounts are linked to. That's my YouTube, my, my Twitter, my, all that. Um, and I have a link tree on my Instagram that will take you to all the important places. But that's that's where you find me. Cool. Um, 
channeling if it's your thing that's that's great you'll have a channeling to check out if not uh enjoy the podcast i've been putting in my my a lot of energy into getting a lot of great guests including faust yes uh, check out to, to do my enlightenment evolution hour and the enlightenment evolution hour every wednesday goes live some incredible people who some people who i've had on my show um fantastic show yeah i'm streamed live every wednesday right rob yeah, every Wednesday at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. I'm there. Check it out. You can't spend a better hour doing anything else. Um, thanks a million for your time, bro. I, I know how busy you are, man, and, and I, I appreciate you making time for me and, and, and everybody and coming back on the program. A lot more ears now um, to hear to hear you speak. I'm excited about that. Well, I hope they they enjoyed our chat. As always, my, my favorite part about it is hoping that what we say is useful to someone and same I mean, here. you've been running this podcast for a long time now with a lot of people loving it. So, of course, people are going to love this. Hope so. so thank you, brother, for having yeah, me. Yeah, bro. Um, give give my love to the family, please. And mine to yours, too. Thanks, brother. brother. I will do. Thank you so much. Yeah. Talk to you soon, brother.